What sophomores will make a big leap from their freshman year and become impact players? You are Locked On Turf, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turf. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us part of your day. And college football season is almost here. We're under a couple weeks from the season. Week zero starts this weekend. Notre Dame, USC plays. And there's some also some other games on the schedule. But today we're here to talk about what sophomores will make a big leap from their freshman year and become impact players this year for the Maryland Terrapins. And I want to start with a guy that might not play this year at all. Might not get in the game once, but I think has made one of the biggest leaps in terms of freshman to sophomore year in quarterback Cameron Edge. He's listed as the third string quarterback right now, but Coach Loxley does say he's competing with Billy Edwards for the second quarterback position and he's te technically not a sophomore. He's a redshirt freshman. But in terms of that it's his second year and everything in the system and being part of the Maryland program, I counted him as a sophomore. But if you watched him in the spring game, this guy made a huge jump. He has a ton of arm talent. And if he does get in, you're going to see it right away. I think he's already made a jump from his freshman year in terms of taking in the whole system becoming just an overall better player, but he's a talented thrower of the ball. And I think if he makes a big jump this year, I think he will be able to compete with Billy Edwards next year for the starting quarterback role. It, it, Billy Edwards might have the edge, but I think Cameron Edge has made a big enough jump and made some impressive throws during the spring game and um, throughout this whole offseason and leading into fall camp. And I think Cameron Edge has made a big jump where the coaching staff is impressed with him. Um, when I was talking with Ahmed Gafir, he talked about how um, Cameron Edge was always one of the last people in practice, throwing after practice, one of the last players on the field, which you'd love to see. So he's certainly had the work ethic to make a big jump into next year. So I think he has already made a jump, but I think he can make another big jump. Um, if we see him play at all this year, we're going to have to be up by a ton because I do expect Billy Edwards to be the second quarterback. Billy Edwards is also really talented. But in terms of Cameron Edge, if we see him this year, he could be really impressive, um, just like he was in the spring game. But next, I want to go to a player that I think could make one of the biggest jumps from his freshman year going into his sophomore year. This year, he was a top-rated player in the 2022 class in four-star Raymond Brown, um, the coaching staff raves about Raymond Brown. I think he has a chance to compete for carries with Antoine Littleton. Um, obviously, the running back room is loaded um, with Roman Hemby as the starting running back, one of the best running backs in the conference, one of Maryland's best weapons. And Antoine Littleton, obviously, is also one of Maryland's best players on offense and one of the more intriguing players on offense because of what he brings in terms of his size in the run game. But Raymond Brown was one of the top recruits out of high school. He's a four-star recruit. He's explosive. He might be more, he might be faster than Roman Hemby. He might be more explosive than Roman Hemby. Obviously, we know how good of a player Roman Hemby is, but he did play a little bit in a loaded running back room last year. But I expect Raymond Brown to get more carries this year and really push Antoine Littleton for the second running back spot. I mean, I expect Antoine Littleton to come in in short yardage, goal line type of stuff. But Ramon Brown can will play a ton this year. I expect to get him involved in this screen game just normal run plays, but also when we run two running back sets, you saw a little bit last year when we ran two running back sets with Roman Hemby and Raymond Brown would also be in there. So I expect there to be a package of that involved um, for this coming year, which I think can be a really good package with those two explosive playmakers. But again, he was a really highly talented guy out of high school and he's almost too good of a player not to get time this year. He was banged up a little bit this spring, didn't play in the spring game, but like I said, did get some carries um, last year. Didn't have a ton of yards or anything, 
but the running back room is for sure loaded for years to come with we have a four-star recruit in the 2024 class and we just have a ton of good running backs in the room so that's definitely one of our top position groups but i do expect brown to compete for playing time and will play a lot this year and might be able to break off a big game-changing play that we're like whoa this guy can play against maybe a michigan state on away and raymond brown is in while roman hemby is getting rest and breaks off a huge play or something like that just an eye-popping play that we didn't expect a play that we thought only roman hemby could make in the maryland backfield but raymond brown can also make those plays we just didn't get to see it last year as much because he was only a freshman but i think he's gotten stronger He's gotten more explosive, more elusive. So I expect him to make a huge impact this year and be maybe an X factor on the Maryland offense. But next, I want to talk about a couple of wide receivers that I expect to make a jump into their sophomore year, um, starting with Octavian Smith. I will say this a little bit, but he is too good not to play. Similar to Raymond Brown, four-star recruit out of high school, um, his number one trait is speed and explosion. Probably the fastest player maybe on Maryland's team. He's got to be top three or five. I expect him maybe to get involved in the return game too. But last year in a loaded wide receiver room, he got time. He got a good amount of time. You saw him in spots in different places, and then you also saw him in the bowl game play really well. But there was also a clip of him on Instagram stretching the field during Maryland's fall camp, one of their scrimmages, I think. Um, and Talia hit him down the field for a huge play. So I'm expecting that kind of explosive ability from Octavian Smith. I think that's his number one trait is the ability to stretch the field with his speed. But we do have the wide receiver room is loaded, of course, with Jason Jones and Tyrese Chambers and Caden Prather, but I think Octavian Smith is just too good not to play. Obviously, Ty Felton, and then another guy that we're going to talk about in a second is also in that wide receiver room, but I really do think he'll push all those guys. He'll play a lot. I'm not sure how much, but he got on the field last year with three NFL wide receivers and Rakeem Jarrett, Dante Demas, um, and Copeland, who are all in NFL training camps now. So I think Octavian Smith down the road, maybe it's not this year. I think this year he could have like 200 yards is a good year for him this year with the amount of wide receiver talent we have. Um, but he might just make a couple of big plays that it's like Coach Loxley and the offensive staff is like, we just can't keep this kid off the field. He has to play. He's just too good just in terms of that speed that he brings and the ability to separate. I think he can play a little bit outside. He's just He's not as big as a Caden Prather, of course. He's not like 6'4". He's kind of just a normal size, maybe a little bit undersized guy. But Octavian Smith, I think, is a little bit too good not to play. But I think he can break a couple of big plays, similar to Raymond Brown or, um, against a Michigan or Ohio State that really opens up the game for us and brings that over-the-top field um, that I don't know if we have on the offense right now in terms of the starting three expected wide receivers and Caden Prather, Jason Jones, and Tyrese Chambers. I think Tyrese Chambers can stretch the field a little bit, but I think Caden Prather is more the jump ball guy. Jason Jones, third, third down guy, um, the best separator. And Tyrese Chambers brings a little bit of everything with route running, um, red zone threat, had two touchdowns in the spring game. Um, but I think Octavian Smith can be a field stretcher for us, and I'm expecting a big year. If you want to hear about another wide receiver that I expect to make a big jump, stay after this break from Better Help. This show is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge let therapy be your map with better help 
Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on college today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on college. All right. So another wide receiver that I think can make a huge jump that didn't play a ton last year, but was also another really talented player in the Maryland 2022 class, and Shalik Knox. Um, he kind of got overtaken by Octavian Smith for that second wide receiver um, role in the in terms of the freshman um, class last year. Um, Octavian Smith did play a lot more than him. I'm not going to say a lot more, but a good amount more than him for the freshman. But Shalik Knox did show up in some games, made about 10 catches for 30 yards, nothing crazy, just in spots played. But like I said, he was a four star out of high school and you can kind of see the trend. We recruit running backs really well and we recruit wide receivers really well right now. Those are our top two positions that we recruit really well. Those are the players that were able to get four star, highly talented recruits. But Shalik Knotts kind of gives us the best of all worlds. I think he has prototypical size at about 6'2". He's listed at on the Maryland website. So he does bring a little bit of that jump ball ability that Dante Davis brought us and Keaton Prather um, brought us. A lot of people compared him to Dante Dimas. Um, I'm not sure if that's a great comparison, but I think he does have some similar traits in terms of what Dante Dimas brings. But I think down the line can be more of an explosive playmaker than Dimas was. But – like I said, has a really good frame at 6'2", has a lot of traits. I'm interested to see how much he's improved this year, um, if he can get on the field this year a lot. Like I said, it's a loaded wide receiver room. Octavian Smith is going to be pushing. Ty Felton is going to be pushing for playing time. Um, there's just so many bodies in there. That's why I'm not concerned about the wide receiver room at all. And that's why I said in the other episode, I was like, if the cornerbacks are – and the rest of the secondary is matching up well against the wide receiver room that we have, then that's a really positive note for us. But I think down the road, he could form a really good duo with Octavian Smith when they're maybe seniors or even next year when they're juniors. I think they can have a really good one-two punch with Octavian Smith, that wide receiver, and Shalik Knotts. Um, he also might be too talented not to play. It all is up to him on how much he's improved, how the wide receiver staff has not developed him. But he has all the traits and talent to be one of our top wide receivers. Even this year, um, he could push all those guys in the room. The wide receiver room is absolutely loaded. But we'll see what Shalik Knotts brings if he plays a lot. But I want to move on to the defensive side of the ball into one player that I've talked about a good bit but I think he can be the number one impact or the have the biggest leap from his freshman year. And Jordan Phillips, transfer from Tennessee. Maryland recruited him out of high school. Um, didn't play last year. Was Is actually a redshirt freshman technically. But again, I'm looking at in terms of its, its second year. So I still wanted to count him on this especially because he has a chance to be our best defensive lineman right away. He's 6'3", huge, plugs up the middle, didn't play at all last year for Tennessee. So in terms of jumps, I expect him to make one of the biggest jumps if he's going from not playing to one of our best defensive linemen. That's what, when I was talking to Ahmed, that's what he talked about. He said he has a chance to come in and be one of our best players right away. 6'3 body in the middle is exactly what we need to be able to stop the run, to be able to stop all the Big Ten running backs in terms of Corum, Edwards, so many just good players, Singleton and Allen at Penn State. There's so many good running backs in the Big Ten. Pro probably has the two best running back rooms in Penn State and Michigan who both have two of the best running back duos in all the country, and we have to play them. So Jordan Phillips has a chance to really help stopping those guys in terms of his size and his athletic ability. And if you saw him, they posted one clip of him moving through cones, and that guy can move 
for his size really well. So I think Jordan Phillips has a chance to come in and be one of the top defensive linemen as a redshirt freshman, which is exactly what we need. And I think down the line has a chance to be an even better player. I think he can get to an all Big Ten player status in his redshirt junior year if he stays for senior year, just depending on the trajectory of his career, he has a chance to be one of the better defensive linemen that we have for the coming years. And I expect big things this year from Jordan Phillips. Next, a player that played a lot last year as a freshman in Kellen Wyatt. He's an outside linebacker, defensive end, Jack linebacker type, whatever you want to categor categorize him as. Um, Played a lot as a freshman last year, was a rotational piece, made some plays like when you look back at him in the Charlotte game, had a really good um, sack against them, shows good hand usage, has good size overall, and I think he has a chance to make another jump at that role, maybe get three sacks this year, maybe make a sack against one of the better players in the Big Ten. Um, it Again, it depends on how much he's been developed for the Maryland staff, um, how well they've done with him. But I'm expecting another big jump for him, especially next year in terms of his junior year, because there are other players in that room that I expect to play a lot and have a huge impact. And Donnell Brown and Quayshawn Fuller, two guys that we have talked about a lot. But that group is inexperienced in terms of playing at Maryland. Obviously, Donnell Brown had amazing stats at the FCS level and, um, Quayshawn Fuller, who hasn't played a ton for Maryland yet, was just rotational, but I think he's one of the more talented players in the room. But also Kellen Wyatt, don't forget him. He has a chance to be a really good player in that room. But I think with a solid sophomore year, he has a chance to propel himself into a really big junior year, but he needs to be one of our better players um, at that spot. Um, and like I said, and he's going to be a rotational player, but we're going to need him to be a really good player this year and make another jump. I thought he was pretty good last year, but I think he has a chance to be a really good player overall, especially with how he performed as a freshman. All right, we next we're going to talk about one of the players that has a chance to be one of the best Maryland players ever on the defensive side of the ball. Stick around after this ad from Fan duel. Football season is about to kick off, and Fan duel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get a bonus bet every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports books. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. This player has a chance to be one of the best Maryland defensive linemen or defense or linebackers, sorry, ever in Jay Sean Barham. Barham played a ton as a freshman last year. I've talked about him a good bit. He was our starter last year. He was a freshman All-American, had four sacks, 50-something tackles. He was already one of the best players on defense and one of the best players on the whole entire team. Four-star recruit, one of the top recruits that Coach Loxley has ever brought into this program. And he legitimately has a chance to be the best linebacker ever at Maryland. But when I talk about him in terms of jumps, last year he played at a really high level, played one of the best linebackers in the Big Ten already. But this year, when I'm talking about jumps, this guy has to take a jump from good to one of the greats. He has to take a jump from being like a, a honorable Big Ten mention type of guy to being a first team, second team, all Big Ten type of player, which is going to be hard because there's a lot of good linebackers in the Big Ten. If you look at Abdul Carter, who was another um, freshman last year, who's a sophomore now at Penn State, he and Jason Barham went back and forth for who's the best freshman linebacker in the Big Ten. And Abdul Carter got that edge at the end of the year in terms of awards. But Jason Barham is definitely right there with him. 
Those two guys are freaks. Those two guys are going to have a chance to be first round, second round type of picks. But also Tommy Eichenberg at Ohio State is one of the best linebackers in the country. So it's going to be hard for him to be an all Big Ten type of player or at least first team all Big Ten. But second team Big Ten is not out the question. And I don't even think first team out Big Ten is not out the question. He's been on so many award watch lists and he has the chance to be one of the best linebackers in the country this year. So when I'm talking about jumps for him, I mean jumps in terms of good to great to one of the best this year in his sophomore year. He's only a true sophomore, so he's still so young and everything, but that's the caliber of player he is. That's the talent he's shown on the field. So I'm expecting him to make that kind of jump. And we're going to need that if we want to be a top 25 defense this year, be one of the better defenses in the Big Ten. He's going to have to be our best player. I want him to become more of a leader. I think that's the number one place you probably look at. As him as a linebacker, he probably didn't want to take that huge vocal leadership role last year as only a freshman. But this year, we're going to need him to be more of a leader. And especially next year as a junior, when he's going to be known as one of the best players overall in the country. And he could get drafted as a junior next year. We'll see what happens, but he legitimately has a chance to be one of the best um, players on Maryland's team ever. We talk about Talia being one of the best Maryland quarterbacks ever, probably the best. Jay Sean Barham has that type of ability. So we have two players on the team that could go down as Maryland's best players ever. And I don't say that lightly, but I think that realistically you could look at Jay Sean Barham when it's all said and done as one of the best Maryland linebackers ever. But next – Let's move to the secondary and talk about a couple players that I thought played really well in spots last year, didn't play a ton, didn't start with a ton with all of our NFL talent in terms of Deontay Banks and Jacorian Bennett, but guys that I think could be the difference this year in a good or great defense and the defense making another step. And I want to start with Lionel Whitaker. So he's an intriguing player, played outside cornerback a little bit last year, didn't play a ton, only a freshman, has great size at 6'1". Um, but when he showed up, I was impressed with him. I didn't see him get beat a ton in terms of man coverage. I think he has a lot of traits. Um, but like I said, he's 6'1", which will help with long arms, deflecting passes and whatnot. And I think it also helps in zone coverage, just having that range in terms of length and zone coverage. Um, but he's competing for that outside cornerback role. And then I'm going to refer to this a lot. It all depends on what the Maryland staff wants to do with Tarheeb still. If they want to play Tarheeb outside, then I don't expect Lionel to play really at all or much because I don't think he's a slot guy. I think he's an outside cornerback. But if they decide to move Tarheeb inside, then – Lionel is competing with Corey Coley for that outside spot. And I think it's a close battle. We'll see what happens between those two. But I think they'll both play early on. But Lionel could be one of those guys that's too good not to play. I just think he's played really well last year in spots. Has great length. Has good tools. We'll see what happens with him. But he could make a jump. It really just depends on what the staff wants to do with Tarheeb um, and how confident they are with um, Lionel and Coley. So we'll see what happens, but Lionel has a chance to make a big jump. And then that moves over to another player in the secondary who's similar to Lionel in terms of positional player um, in the cornerback room in Gavin Gibson. The reason I also say he's similar because if Gavin Gibson is more of a slot corner, he um, appeared in um, spots last year also. But if Tarhi plays the outside, then Gavin Gibson has a chance to be the starting nickel back last year. I thought he played pretty well in spots last year. But if Tarheeb is inside, I don't think Gavin Gibson will play much outside. I mean, maybe I could be wrong, but I expect that to be more of a competition between Coley and Lionel. But we kind of expect Tarheeb to go back and forth between outside and inside. It might depend on matchups. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, that's one of the spots that I'm really going to be looking out for. That's the only new spot in the secondary. Of course, Jacon Shepard was a transfer this year, but he's been a really good player for Cincinnati for a while now. So in terms of new players in the secondary, that's the one spot. It's either the nickelback or outside cornerback, depending on what Tarheeb still does. 
But that's all we have for today. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe. We're here every day. And thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.